Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. To most of us, it is no surprise that there are many plants and animals that are at risk for going extinct. They're becoming endangered. And there's lots of things that are happening out in the environment that are impacting these organisms that are causing them to become closer to going extinct. So that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be exploring some of the major environmental threats that are affecting plants and animals all around the world. So let's go ahead and get started. Environmental threats are things that are affecting the health of the planet, including the plants and animals that live here, which sometimes we forget, but we are animals too, so even humans can be affected by these environmental threats. These threats are happening in rainforests and grasslands and even in the ocean and places that humans have never even been are being threatened by these environmental threats. And there are many, many different ways that the environment is being threatened, but today we're going to focus on some of the major environmental threats that are impacting the planet. Habitat loss is currently a huge environmental threat that, as the name implies, is the loss of natural habitat. As the human population grows, we need more space for cities, farms, even roads, and a lot of the times to get the space to build these things for humans, we take that space away from animals. We clear or burn areas so that we can use that space to build things for us. And this does happen everywhere. This happens in grasslands and other types of ecosystems. But one ecosystem that has been really affected by this are forests. And when forests are removed, we call that process deforestation. And this is a particularly bad form of habitat loss because forests are really important. Forests take carbon dioxide out of the air and turn it into oxygen, which us and all animals need to survive. So forests not only remove harmful gases from the atmosphere, they also put helpful gases back out into the atmosphere. And when we tear down forests or we burn them or clear them, we lose that positive environmental impact that forests have. Habitat fragmentation is kind of like a type of habitat loss where one really large area of habitat is divided into smaller areas of natural habitat that are all separate from one another. Now this could be if we had a forest and we built a road or a community through the center of the forest and now the organisms in the forest over here can't get to the organisms in the forest over here. And that can be a big problem for many reasons. When it becomes hard for animals to move from place to place, it's harder for them to reach other members of their species, which makes it harder for them to breed. If they run out of food in the habitat that they're in, they can't really go get to another habitat where there might be fresh food. And because now there's humans mixed in with all this wildlife, humans and wildlife are interacting more, which can be both scary for humans and the animals. So all these different reasons are why habitat fragmentation can be really harmful and is a really bad environmental threat. Poaching is another really harmful environmental threat. Poaching is the hunting or collecting of an animal illegally, and this happens for many different reasons. One big reason it happens for is for food. In areas that are kind of cut off from the rest of civilization, they might have a hard time getting access to food and protein. So oftentimes primates are hunted and eaten because that's a great source of protein in those areas. Animals may also be hunted for food in a traditional sense, like sharks. Sharks are hunted for their fins to be used in shark fin soup, which is a very traditional meal that doesn't end well for the sharks. One that is a problem that we're all kind of dealing with is overfishing, the demand for seafood. Fishermen are pulling fish and other marine organisms out of the ocean faster than they can reproduce. And this is all because of the demand for seafood, some of the seafood that all of us love to eat. 
Poaching may also occur because of the demand for trophies, for trinkets, and things that people just think are cool but don't actually have any real value. Like an elephant's tusk is made out of ivory and people love that ivory, they think it's valuable, so elephants are poached for their tusks, whereas a sea turtle might be poached for their beautiful shell. People think they're wonderful and magnificent, so they want a trophy from that animal and that doesn't always end well for the animal. And the last reason that animals are poached, and this is when I said at the beginning that they're collected, sometimes animals are collected alive and sold illegally on the black market as part of the illegal pet trade. So sometimes endangered species are collected and sold because people like exotic animals, like squirrel monkeys. People think they're so little and cute and so they're removed from the rainforest and sold as pets which is not where squirrel monkeys are supposed to be. Moving on from poaching to our next environmental threat, we are moving to invasive species. An invasive species is an organism who has ended up in a place that they are not native to, they are not supposed to be, and they've established a population and kind of made a home in this environment where they're invasive to, where they're not supposed to be. And sometimes invasive species end up in these new places both on purpose or on accident. The cane toad was introduced to Australia to help keep the pest population down around farms. Cane toads love to eat beetles and other crop eating bugs, so it was thought by introducing the cane toads, all those pests would be gone and their crops would be able to grow free of pests. But now the cane toads have established a very large population and they're affecting other wildlife in the area. I said some organisms can be introduced on accident, like the brown tree snake was introduced into Guam. Scientists think it was a stowaway on a ship, and now these snakes have established a huge population on Guam, and they're eating all the native birds. So invasive species are occasionally a really harmful environmental threat for the other native species that we find in that area. Our last two environmental threats kind of go hand in hand. We're going to start off with pollution, and pollution can be in many different forms, right? It can be garbage and other items that we find in the environment. We could find plastics in a forest or on the beach. We also can find plastics deep in the ocean where humans have never even ventured. So wildlife in the deep ocean is being affected by our pollution. Pollution can also be in the form of chemical runoff. Now this might be oil running off from the street where cars have been driving. It also could be pesticides or fertilizers from big farms running off into the waterways and then traveling all around the environment in the water. Pollution can also happen in the atmosphere because of greenhouse gases. As we burn fossil fuels, all of those greenhouse gas emissions go up into the atmosphere and lead us to our last environmental threat, which is that of climate change. As these greenhouse gases build up in the atmosphere, they trap heat near the surface of the Earth. So gradually, slowly, the Earth's temperature is warming. And that's usually what we think of when we think of climate change, but there's even more to it than that. The temperature at the poles, by the North Pole and the South Pole, are warming a little bit faster than everywhere else, so all that ice is melting, taking away habitats from animals who need sea ice, like polar bears, and causing the level of the ocean to rise. That climate change also causes the frequency of storms, like hurricanes and typhoons, to be not only more intense, to be bigger, louder, scarier, but it also makes them happen more frequently. Instead of just happening once every couple years, now maybe these storms are happening every year or every other year. So these storms are becoming more damaging. And places that never experience floods or never experience droughts are now starting to experience these big changes in their local climate. So pollution can cause climate change, which affects not just the North Pole and the South Pole, it affects every environment in the whole world. Now our impact is really important because a healthy environment means healthy organisms. 
all the different plants and animals in the world, if they want to be healthy, we need to reduce these environmental threats. And we can do that by living sustainably, which means the things that we do in our day to day lives, how can we do them by creating less waste, using less energy and thinking about the well-being of our planet? And there's stuff that you guys can do every single day. When we talked about pollution, we mentioned lots of plastic in the environment, and that's because plastic doesn't ever go back into the earth the way paper does. It just breaks down into tiny little pieces. So something you guys can do is use paper options instead of plastic options. You even get bonus points if you use sustainably harvested paper or paper made out of bamboo, which grows really fast. Something else you guys can do is use less energy. And this is stuff you can do around the house, right? Turning off the lights, turning off the TV. But another part of this is by buying less things, you're using less energy. Every time a new product is made, every time a new toy is made, that takes energy, which often requires burning fossil fuels. So by buying less things, less new stuff, you're actually reducing your energy use. Another thing that we can do, which we don't always think of because it seems like if we love animals, we should want to spend as much time near them and with them as we can. However, we kind of want to leave wildlife alone. We don't want wildlife getting too comfortable with people because the next person who encounters that animal might not be as nice as you guys are. So we want animals to be a little bit weary of us to kind of keep their distance. So even though all these environmental threats can feel really overwhelming and kind of hard to picture and rationalize, there's stuff you guys can do every day to feel empowered and make a positive impact. And so I hope you guys walk away with this feeling like you know how to live a little bit more sustainably. All right, you guys, thank you for hanging out with me today while we learned all about environmental threats. And I hope we see you next time at our next educating adventure.